Painting landscapes with watercolor is probably one of my favorite things to do because for one, it's forgiving, but you can also take a lot of liberties with your interpretation, especially when you address this in a loose style. And although it seems like I'm making one painting, I'll actually turn these into two greeting cards. And this is why I'm masking off a strip uh, three quarters of the way down that will be for a writing a sentiment on these thank you cards. I am working on rough grain paper by Arches which is my favorite paper to use when I do loose style painting. To me, and this is just an observation, but I feel like the texture is a good fit for the loose shapes and I think it just emphasizes the quality of loose painting. I'm painting with Renaissance paints, which dry very vibrant, uh, which is another good fit for this type of paper. In my opinion, these paints compared to Magello Mission Gold, I love them. Uh, they're a Polish brand and uh, there is a distributor, however, in North America. So I will leave the link to where you can get these paints as well as um, all the supplies will be listed in the description of the video. All right, so although this is a loose painting, I kind of had a strategy going in. I knew I wanted um, some trees in the background and trees closer to the viewers. Obviously, whatever is in the background has to be lighter. That's just a fact of life. And then I will have a second layer with the trees that are in the foreground. So what I did is I dropped a little bit of water with a fine mister uh, bottle and I also added some drops with clean water and my paintbrush. I just splashed a bit of water with it. And as you can see, the shapes are very, very loose. They do not necessarily re resemble trees. I'm just, at this point, I'm just dropping in some color and I'm leaving a little bit of white here and there. And although these paints are vibrant, they are going to dry a little bit lighter. And that's really what you want for the background trees. I am working with an oval brush, which is kind of like, it's it's flat but pointy at the same time. To me, it's a mixture of a flat brush and a round brush. And I like it just because of that, because of its versatility, I get to have both in one brush. To get the different greens, I have mixed the um, the gold green and the blue. As for the ground, I am mixing sepia with a little bit of that magenta color, which is called geranium lake. And I'll also be dropping a little bit of that blue later on, just to darken up the horizon line just underneath that masked um, strip there. And I'm just mixing a little bit of magenta into the trees maybe just to represent uh, kind of like an early fall landscape maybe not that I'm wishing for fall <laughs> I'm very happy with summer but this was just for fun <laughs> I can now add a little bit of blue to the sky because the tops of the trees that I first painted are almost dry they're not completely dry, but dry enough for me to add a little bit of blue without it mixing too, too much with the green. And 
I noticed that I moved from one area to another. I started with the trees, then I did the ground, then I went back in with a little bit of geranium lake into the foliage um, because I did not want the uh, magenta to go all crazy into the greens. So it just mixed in a little bit. And back to the sky, I am not going to paint a flat blue all um, the way to the top of the, the, the painting. I just wanted to have the color close to the trees and then I just feathering it out with the brush uh, by using, by cleaning my brush and then drying it a little bit and then just uh, picking up the edges so that it blends really well. And then in some areas it, it, it merges to uh, white to, to nothing. Um, I know the sky again is not realistic. Um, I just go with my guts. <laughs> go go with what I feel should look nice and I do like the contrast between this blue and the lighter trees and so I'm going to play with that. I'm going to add a little bit more intensity to that blue color later on. And of course um, because in my mind there is nothing past those trees, um, I added a little bit of blue underneath that or underneath the trees uh, close to the mast uh, tape or the mast area just um, to give the hint of a horizon line. So technically the sky would go all the way down to the horizon line. So I've now switched to a round brush again, not sure why, but I guess I wanted something smaller than my oval brush. And this, uh, by the way, is my second layer. So before I went ahead and started painting that tree, I let everything dry completely. Um, and that's going to help me have defined edges around this um, other plane of trees. I'm also going to be a little bit more deliberate in in this in this in the shapes I guess of the trees but again it's still a very loose style um, I'm not going to define the leaves as far as the shapes are concerned it's very difficult for me <laughs> to explain how I paint trees I just start plopping some colors <laughs> until um, it looks like a tree I guess if you were to observe the shapes it's kind of like a triangle I want to say but a very misshapen triangle and then um, I'm also using this brush to add some tree trunks
Now I know this is very unusual, but I just felt like adding a little bit of that magenta into the sky. And I absolutely love the effect. I find violet and purples are always a good addition, especially with this color scheme, like the greens and, and the blues. And it just adds that playfulness to the whole painting. This is why I love loose painting, because you can you can be so unpredictable. You can add that little hint of whimsy into your painting and I, I don't know. I just think it makes things a little bit more interesting. It's fun. That's the only way I can explain it. It's just fun. I want to encourage you to work that into your paintings. Even if you think, oh, it, it doesn't make sense and it doesn't have to make sense. Just have fun. Have fun. That's all that is. That's what creativity is all about. I'm adding white to the ground just because I... I know I'm going to have a very large bend of white in the middle, so I didn't want it to be like too contrasting. I, I do love contrast, and this is why I ended up darkening the sky so much. But at the same time, the contrast need to make sense. Um, sometimes it's too much. you got to do something about it. So that's why I added a little bit of gouache to the ground. And that pretty much finishes the paintings. Um, I was also very mindful of having five tree trunks on either side of the paintings because I am dividing this in two to make a card and I like odd numbers. <laughs> so that's the only reason why I kept that in mind. Uh, this painter's tape is the first time I'm using it. It's by Pro Artist and I really like it for masking. However, if you're using this uh, to hold down your paper onto a surface, that's not going to work. It doesn't bond with other surfaces other than paper, I find, because I tried it and it didn't work. So once I separated the paper, I just needed to cut my artwork in half and these are going to be glued onto 5 by 7 card backings. And finally the sentiment, I traced with a pencil first because I didn't trust myself with going in with just the uh, marker. I'm using the Pigma Microns, that might not have been the best choice. The one thing about rough grain, although I absolutely adore it, it's very difficult to doodle on top of it. It's very damaging to the felt tips, but I needed something permanent just in case because I wasn't sure if I was going to add a little bit of coloration to that strip. Maybe I will, like I'm looking at it and it looks like a little bit too white for me, but uh, for now it's going to stay that way. And there it is. I got two more greeting cards to gift my patrons. I was running out of cards and I got tired of pretties. <laughs> so anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you'll give this a try. I think they look great. I really, really like them. And uh, hopefully this will inspire you to create some loose painting. The landscape doesn't have to be cards, of course. You can also make bookmarks. I know my bookmarks video was quite popular, so it seems like a, yeah, it's a popular topic. So go ahead and give it a try. And if you want to tag me on Instagram uh, at CreationCC, I would love to see what you make. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, my awesome patrons, for supporting this channel. It means a great deal to me. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below and I will see, see you soon.